This is season seven of the Premier League, a unique event that sees 12 players play four heats each with the simple aim of amassing as many points as possible in the league stages. The top four will go through to the final table. The next four will clash in the heads-up playoffs for their last two remaining spots. It's an exciting format that generates a lot of action. That's so tilting. You're so hopeless, it's amazing. Ooh, I call it. You play that garbage? Wow! I gotta be ready to hug you. Very strange, Vanessa. Very strange. This is not normal poker. This is like fun style points like this and that. Premier League stuff is sick, bro. Last time, he too did not disappoint. There was drama and excitement as the chip lead chopped and changed with both good and bad poker. Over a fun-filled 11 levels of play, and Jesse May has the highlights. Heat 2 was a lot of fun, and joining me for the ride in the comms box was Heat 1 winner Jeff Gross, who watched on with great interest as the action unfolded. Dan Shack was all smiles when he arrived at the Playground Poker Club, but unfortunately for him, he was the first to leave. His ace is cracked by Jungle's two pair. I didn't want to bust you, Dan. I wanted to bust you. Man. The defending champion out in eighth with the bagel. Selfs, Lock, Rast, Jungle, and Duhamel followed, leaving Seaver and Kuhn heads up for the heat. Jason Kuhn took it down, and with it, the maximum 14 points. He now tops the league with 17 points from two heats, closely followed by Jungle and Jeff Gross, who has played one, won one. Home favorites Jonathan Duhamel and Sorel Mizzy occupy the middle of the pack, both hoping to impress in this next heat. But at the foot of the table, Phil Locke, Vanessa Selbst, and reigning champion Dan Shack are desperate for those all-important points. This is the second time we're seeing current champion Dan Shack in this Premier League. Now, what do you need to have happen going into this heat? Uh, the first thing is one person has to go out before me. Yeah. I don't think I could uh, mentally take the double bagel. <laughs> so, I don't know if it's ever happened in the history of the league, but uh, I want to make sure it doesn't happen here. And uh, so I guess I'm going to play a little tight to begin right. with. And... It'll probably work to my disadvantage because, you know, they're all good players here and they probably are going to be aware of that. I know I need some points, so uh, I'm not going to be happy with, you know, going out to second person, so I'll probably open up my game a little bit after that. Okay, well, good luck out there. All right, thank you very much. Well, Heat 3 about to get underway. I'm joined by Premier League player Brian Rast. And Brian, in Heat 3, Vanessa Selps and Dan Shack find themselves sort of in a similar spot to the one you found yourself in Heat 2. Unfortunately. Ne yeah, needing points. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what should their tactics be? I think for sure they don't want to come in with, like, a zero or one ball on this. Because, I mean, go after two heats if you have no points. I mean, it, you basically have to win your next heat. So... Some of it's going to depend, I think, on the psychology of the players involved. I mean, my guess is that Dan is going to, by playing pretty conservative, make sure he at least gets, you know, five points or more in this one. Vanessa, I'm a little less sure about. You know, she also might kind of take into consideration that other people are trying to edge up and early on gamble in some spots to get some chips. I mean, yeah. conversely, Jeff Gross, he's sitting at the top of the tree, and heat number one, it was kind of like tight is right for him. Yeah. Same again, or...? Tight's a little more his style, so I think he's gonna do the same thing again today. I mean, if Jeff has a solid showing here and gets at least five points, I mean, he's almost locking himself into, uh, you know, making the final table, so. Yeah, I mean, 18 points could be golden, and Jeff grows not that far away as Heat 3 kicks off. The players are ready here at the Playground Poker Club as the pressure for points increases. 14 points go to the winner. Last place leaves with the infamous bagel. But who will that be? This is Heat 3. Start last year, this, uh, man here. Like All hands, hands on deck for game. Heat oh, number 3 of Premier League Poker 7. <laughs> the luck there. He is always the star of the show. Don't worry, I know you're going to clip uh, me for like 25% of my Points have happened stack. already. I'm okay so there's a lot of dynamics going on as we kick off Heat 3. And of course, sweater, Jeff Gross, Brian, currently the lead the leader, yeah, having won the first I Heat. So he's feeling very good about things. To be There's Jason Kuhn, the winner of the second heat. Actually, so he's got 17 points through two heats loves, played. Like, Jeff, is it the There's same Mizzy. triangle thing in between your legs as it is on First time side? playing the Premier League, yeah. but with uh, seven little, points. I think you have to put your legs uh, he's going to be feeling quite yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. It's symmetrical. It's, it's not a good 
Heat number three in action, and Phil Locke's got like a tinfoil spacesuit on his head, it looks like. Or, oh. So I'd, I'd like the world to know that Phil Locke and I played back, played uh, gambled last night up until late at night. So um, Phil's not on a lot of sleep, but Phil doesn't need sleep. He doesn't really need a lot of sleep, does he? <laughs> In fact, maybe oh. he plays better on no sleep. Yeah, oh. Phil was a character yesterday. Uh, I mean, you've been, one, been yeah. one of the guys at the table. At what point did you realize oh, that 4, he really just stopped He's having it? All the time? You know, I wish I had. I never. Brain, I don't think any of us at the table really, really knew like because no one ever called him. Right. I mean, he just, just got away with a lot of moves. And I mean, it wasn't until kind of later like when we were talking about hands that we found out that well, wow, Phil just really had nothing the whole day when I was putting in his whole stack. Heads up. It would be good. And so, I mean, that dynamic coming in right here, he's picked up ace-king first hand. Check. And Check. basically, you know, in Vanessa oh. Selp's uh, idea, uh, Phil could have any two Check. here. Ace-7 is way above her perceived range of what Phil Locke is supposed to have right now. Oh, well, Vanessa, let's yes, for I sure. I, I mean, I think this is a kind of standard hand at this point. She has ace-7 suited. No. I, I think against Phil, Seems who's very unpredictable, yeah. she's yeah. more than happy just calling check. and seeing a flop, you know? And... Um, I mean, it's type of hand, even if she's slightly ahead of his opening range, it's still, Six with three times. cards to come on the flop, you know, you have no idea how the flop's going to shake down. But I expect Vanessa to probably call one mm -hmm. time here with her pair. Yeah, well, check, check on the flop, actually. This is yeah. an odd lead on the turn, sort of delayed continuation bet from yeah, Phil. Yeah, which, I mean, it's going to be hard for her to believe. I mean, she's not putting him on a flush, obviously. You would bet that most of the time, but she's worried if maybe he hit an 8 or if she delayed a 10, but she, she's going to pay at least one time to... To see what's going on. For sure. Of course, these are two of the players Qualified at the bottom of the leaderboard right now, and you wonder if Locke realizes oh, that's a good barreling Phil's, card. Phil's for bluffing him. this for sure. Okay. I mean, and if he bet the turn, he has to bet this, and it's going to be hard for her to call, actually. Actually, 13, impossible, 000. right? I mean, no, it's not impossible, but uh, but um, I mean, it, this would be a big hero call, yeah. And she's oh. just not. I overqualified. Qualified and overqualified. Tony G, where's so Tony happy G? Right now, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> he is, uh, he is one of the people you know best in the poker world, Brian, yes. or just one of the guys you appreciate the most. I, mean, I didn't know even it's, see it. Now yeah, it's both. Flush? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's one of the people stuff? I know best. It's I've, incredible. <laughs> I've traveled with Phil. New York in I met my wife I going to anywhere. Brazil with Phil. I mean, he's, he's a very good friend, one of my best friends, so I, I know him very well. And uh, he's obviously one of the most unique and entertaining people, too, to watch play poker. I mean, how yesterday he put on quite the show. I was at the table, and I was laughing a lot just like watching his antics. Yeah, and you were, you were getting hammered by him a little bit, yeah, and you still enjoyed it in a sense. Precise. Yeah. <laughs> Hermetic. Well, so you had trivial decisions. But uh, we were talking before about what everyone's intentions are going to be. I mean, Vanessa there with, with only one point. Phil Locke's only got three points. Um, you know, they really can't afford a bagel here. I mean, it, it just just Jack cannot Jack. happen. That is, that's 125,000 in the toilet, nearly, if they the get a bagel today. today. There's like nine people in there. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to have it. We're going to have a pot right here. There's going to be a four-way pot, probably. I'm, I'm expecting Gross just to call. <laughs> the power of the flat And I mean, Coons just going to call with ace four. Oh. Oh, so, right. here we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm expecting, I'm expecting Shaq like, to start this out game. really tight. Oh. Because of that spot, I think Shaq's going to react by by playing tight, trying to make sure he at least gets fifth place or higher. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what Selps is going to do. I mean, it, she's already lost the pot. Um, she might gamble with some of her starting chips, but uh, if she gets down to around 200, she'll probably tighten up a bit too. So two hands and two ace kings for Phil Locke. He's lost the flop really on both of them. Yeah, I I can't see how. Ten thousand. This pot's going to be between uh, Lack and Duhamel. And I, you never know with Phil exactly what he's going to do. So, I mean, he could definitely barrel this more than once. I mean, I, I can't see Duhamel oh. giving up till the r river either. Duhamel's known as a very aggressive player, but I think, I mean, he 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 kind of took the oh. put the brakes on oh. a yes. little bit. Really I'm it. playing Last the Sorrell style. He just, he just, the right move, he just opened the right folded, uh, the right up and flop. down straight draw. 
for ten thousand. Need to know That's if this is like the normal fill or the fill that I was commentating on. In the, I mean, oh, was it? I shouldn't say anything. I don't know. Yeah, that I'm, was. I'm wondering in a sense whether well or not maybe. Was, I mean, are the card readers a hundred percent? That was the cherry bomber that day. Yes, because they're they're backed up by by cameras, and we do we do they they do check them sometimes. I am I am very surprised. I mean, in addition to his open and straight draw, he actually also had a backdoor flush draw, which. You know, I, if um, I'm throwing a chip if any I'm spade, the let's say, you know, obviously if you hit your straight, yeah, but way? you yeah, have, you know, eight more outs reader. in the deck to pick up a flush draw like, on the turn. I, I, I uh, <laughs> actually I'm, I'm think that's kind of a bad over here, this I isn't, I don't well, know where's the line? Is the line like this? Yeah, I don't know if you if you saw He was in position too. Out of all this space, I have a He number two and Jonathan Duhamel, he folded the queen jack the queen jack eight. It's just a single check raise from Scott Seaver and he insta a whole new. Yeah. I'm gonna we were kind of uh, me out. All you all debating about whether he had misread his hand, but I think the guys kind of talked to him afterwards, no, now, and he, now, he said he just didn't want to get involved. And yeah. like I just wonder, Brian. I mean, uh, you know, this is Jonathan's second Premier League, and he might have just recognized how important it is to sort of, you know, work your way through there with average points. That he just doesn't want to play big pots, which is really not how it went for him last season. I have to say. Yeah, but didn't he do well last season? He did, but uh, <laughs> like he that, won huh? the first two heats, and then it's all, no, it look yeah. good. you know, when you just kind of win the first two yeah. heats, it's just all sort good. of easy from there. Back here. Five raises, 29,000. And out. this sort of play here by Jason Koo. Wow, look at this. Um, this feels very tactic. Uh, you know, he won the heat number two. He's got 17 points. He's picking on the, the two players who cannot afford to play big pots now. Would you agree with that? I agree. In fact, maybe this might be the best that's five might be a big reason why Kuhn's right making this play. And it's I mean, a little too, is it a little too obvious? Yeah, but I mean, if you're well, Vanessa I'm Selbs the five Jack here, five what are you going to do about it? I mean, this would be, if she makes her move, you know, it would work. This would be the one move that she really makes before she cool. starts getting low in chips and maybe has to worry about it. So yeah, she didn't make it here. And, and yeah, I, I think Dan Jack's a person who is less likely to make that move. I mean, I've already predicted that he's going to come in and really try to work his way up. So we're going to see. I mean, he might let this one go. And because of that, and I By think way, you're right, if he does let this go, Kuhn is sending out a message like right on now. I'm on your guy's yeah. left, yeah. and uh, yeah. it's hand number That's five, and you better understand what's going to work. This is, this is the ball yeah, game. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of points, and you don't, and I'm going to gamble and try to win chips. So, I mean, let's see. This is going to be, this is a decision for Dan. Is he going to try to gamble to get chips early? I don't know. I mean, because he has a very, very good hand. Or is he going to really try to tighten work his way up? So Dan said, right now, I'm going to try to work my way up the ladder. See that lucky game, Vanessa? <laughs> is, are you a man or are you a mouse? We're mice. Premier League Season 7 continues here at the Playground Poker Club after the break. Welcome back. Season 7 features a thrilling lineup and we're being treated to some exciting poker. Your commentators are Jesse May and Brian Rast. Brian, uh, obviously you've played two heats. Hasn't gone so well on the leaderboard for you so far. Were you happy with your tactics or is it, is it the kind of thing where if you could do it over again you would have changed them so far? You know, I'm pretty happy with with what I decided to do. I mean, I feel oh. like yesterday I got a little bit unlucky. There was a number of times, like I had 6, decent 000. chips the whole time. I was never really all in. Yesterday was a really weird, one of those freak things where all day short stacks were getting all in and oh. then winning. I mean, really, I should have easily slid my way into fourth or third. But I mean, Kuhn got lucky and made a full house when he was all in and then you know, Du Hummel should have been out. Like, he was down to one big blind. I, and I had decent chips the whole time, and just the short stacks kept surviving. And, you know, I was at er, in the middle. I was just trying to, like, inch my way up and try to just get some serious points yesterday. And I feel like my, <laughs> especially because, I mean, I had guys with a ton of chips on my left who were very active in Seaver and Jungle Man. I'm very happy yesterday. I just felt I felt like I got pretty unlucky. Yeah, I think you had some bad runouts. I, I would agree with that. So, and, and not even on my own play. I just mean on how, what happened with everyone else on the table. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, on day one, I mean, I, I came in and thought, based on where my seat was and uh, how other people were going to play, I came out and tried to gamble a lot early. And I mean, there were, I got a few things through, like a light three bet versus Antonio. But then on the flip side, 
I mean, I had a bluff versus Kuhn that didn't work and a couple other and a float that didn't work. And I don't know. It's possible that uh, I should have came in and played a little more conservative on day one. Um, it's hard to say. Sometimes, you know, you can be results oriented. I mean, if I had came out and gambled the way I did and, uh, you know, a bluff worked here or there and I picked up a bunch of chips soon, I, you know, I could have had 600 K and really applied the heat that whole table and like ensured a bunch of points, which is kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to gamble on that first well, table. Well, straight into action here and Vanessa Selps tanking there to the three bet uh, with the 10 jack suit in the big blind. She kind of hates folding that hand, but this is kind of yeah. straightforward, isn't it? I mean, there's no reason to assume that Mizzy would be at it here for Duhamel, is there? I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure she's suspicious and she has a good hand, but uh, I mean, it's another spot where you know, I think Vanessa is going to oh. wait and really pick her spot early on to bluff. And I expect that it's going to be more likely that she, it's if up. she's going to gamble early, it'll be a couple three bets here or there and not kind of risk all of her bluffing chips on this one hand. And why would Duhamel peel? I mean... I don't like the I don't like that play. I mean, there is just no reason to assume that Sorrell Mizzy is going to come out and just bang it in. He's a very tactical player, and he's got every reason to just sort of sit there and slug. I mean, Mizzy's a gambler. Um, I, but yes, I, I just think King 2 suited is, is a little too weak. I mean, you can't really peel with that. I mean, is he even... Out of pos he's no, in he's position. In position. He, he raised from the uh, the hijack, I think, and uh, uh, he's three, uh, three bet from the small blind. I mean, <laughs> king two suit is a little light to peel. I mean, I I would uh, I would tend to go with the four better oh. fold with that Mizzy. one. Mizzy, you know. How's he doing? <laughs> How does he do it? What do you think about Sorrell Mizzy? Of course, you played with him in heat one. He, he really uh, put on sort of a grinder <laughs> show, did didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, it seemed like he was playing really like snug. I mean, I couldn't see his cards. Got, like, last place, he's not almost? playing a lot of hands. Um, I mean, I think he uh, he wasn't doing well early, and then he decided to just really lock down and try to try to make sure he didn't go out too soon. Um, I mean, I know 6, from my experience, and I've known Mizzy over quite a while now, Full. he can be quite a gambler. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like uh, Sorrell's one of those guys who, who uh, is comfortable Full. making adjustments because he yeah. plays so many different games. He's, he's sort of got a natural feel for poker rather than, a, I don't know, maybe as technical. So this could be the spot where Selps, no, okay, so she, but like this is exactly oh, the spot where I feel like Selps is a little more likely to to, to gamble some and maybe make a three bet. Are these spots where she right now with 290k she can play some of these pots where as the aggressor with the betting lead she's uh, you know putting pressure on. But it does look like she's doing exactly what you predicted, which was to just gamble a little bit early, see if she can hit something. And this is all We're gonna action. Get action on this. You, you do I, wonder though with with someone like Selps. I mean, she realizes the danger. Uh, in a tournament, you probably just want to just gamble and put it all in here. The danger of playing a big check. pot for her right now. Well, Kuhn is going to check call this. I mean, Selps is going to bet. So Kuhn is already saying right now that he's going to pot control this. So I mean, if he bet, you don't think he's maybe going to try and, and 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 try and make her uncomfortable by check raising and swelling the pot? No, especially with Kuhn's style, he's he's not a person who's check raising this year. And it's too strong to really, I mean, the problem is if he check raises and then gets re-raised, it, it's like you kind of have to fold your hand. Right. His hand has a ton of value. If you don't fold your hand, you're not going to like the hand you're getting. So rather than the idea I can put pressure on Vanessa, he actually, he doesn't want to play a huge pot right now so as, while much you're as, here, as much as her. Makes sense, right? It's dictated by his hand and a little bit about Kuhn's style from what I've seen, especially deep stacked. Now, I mean, Selps is going to fire this for sure. I mean, this is a great card. I'll be really surprised. She did get into trouble in Heat 1 by triple barreling a weak hand. I mean, it is her style. And you wonder, I mean, is there any chance she's just second guessing that whole idea, whether or not the, the, the triple barrel that she usually employs is, is as right here as usual? Yeah, my guess is she's really thinking about if I bet this turn and get called. Yeah, she's thinking about her triple barrel. But I just couldn't see her checking this back. Now, yeah, Kuhn is um, deciding. So this is the thing. Once you decide to check call this on the flop, you really start thinking, well, maybe my opponent's doing exactly what she's doing. And, wow, well, I can't see Kuhn folding now. But Selps might actually check this back. Because this is a spot where the board didn't change at all. The, the so only hands he would have called on the turn that he would fold on the river is maybe a higher no-pair flush draw, right? I mean, No, but he's probably betting most of those on the flop, too. 
instead of check calling. So it's a good check back by, by Selbst. It's annoying for her because it's like she's just like, man, there's nothing that's working out for me. Right. Here I am down to 240. I mean, <laughs> right. She, and flopped, now, she flopped the up and down straight and flush draw, right? Yeah, and she's, uh, Guys, yeah, ha here's his hand. I thought, you know, up and down straight flush draw. And now she's, I, now that she's getting Get low, like, she basically feels like her hand's forced. I, you know, I felt some of this yesterday. It's like, wow, I'm getting low. Really, she never agrees with me. You kind of feel like you don't have a lot of room to make moves now, and because you don't. And um, I mean, there was a pot yesterday with Phil Locke. I don't know if you remember this, where he like double barreled the turn on an ace, and I just sat there with ten high, thinking Phil yeah, never has anything. Yeah, and Jungle Ben said after that he yeah. just knew it was a bluff. I mean, I, I like I didn't have like Jungle was like, what did you fold? I had ten high. I mean, oh. I, I just was pretty sure he was bluffing too. It was just a point where I looked at his stack and 4, I'm like, 000. if I put this all in and I'm wrong, I'm down to like 50K and I'm almost guaranteed coming out seventh. And I was just like, my oh. Premier League's kind of over. So it, it, as it turns out, he was bluffing and I wish I put the money in, but it, you get in spots like oh, that 4, and it kind of sucks when you have no points because you feel like it's tough to make the best oh, play 4, because of how bad it is for you if you if you are wrong, you know? Whereas, like, if I have Coons points, I'm just like, good luck, Phil. I mean, you know, I'm, you don't have anything. Well, and so th those are the, the, the things that make the Premier League extreme, right? Oh, I mean, you yeah. do have to make extreme decisions. Is that, do you think people enjoy that because it takes them out of their sort of the way they usually think about poker? Or is it kind of like this just really weird form of poker? I think most of the people here really like it. It's part of the reason why they play the Where Premier League. I mean, I know I was a little bit excited to come and... Um, Experiences. Oh my God! We could just see it, right? We could see a big pot. Phil's. You know what? I think Phil's probably gonna call. Oh. I, I mean, there's really a question about. Oh no! There we go. Okay, Phil is saying right now that he's willing to play for the all 300k. Cherry bomber. I don't know. You if never he's know. Gonna, he's gonna come out. Now this is a spot where we're gonna see how much pressure Kuhn really wants to all put right. up. I really think Kuhn's gonna go oh. all in. Yeah, this oh. is a really strong statement by Locke. I mean, oh. he's done this, you know, five ways, the four bet. In, in Locke's mind, he oh. kind of... Yeah, oh, there we go. All in. Now, this kind of sucks for Phil because he... Because Phil only has three points, I, I just like calling with his hand more in position. I mean, he's in a spot now where... Maybe I should have planned. It's right. almost like for Premier League, it sucks for him. That was to a call. line that's right. a reasonable for play. And, and and look at the upside downside of this. I mean, you know, folding doesn't really have that much downside overall. You're giving up a little bit of equity, calling and winning. How much equity is a double up right now with eight people still in? I, I mean, yes. how, how do you how do you how do you weigh those things if you're Phil right now? I mean, the equity, it's its not nearly worth as much as, as going out with zero points is. And, and right now, Phil just realized that. I wish I was slow rolling him and I just had aces. I mean, I would love that. If, if I could find my cards to change and turn into aces, I, even though I'd get land blasted pretty hard for that, it would be worth it at this point. But I don't, I don't have aces, Jason. You're not, you're not, don't worry about me slow rolling. It's just letting you know you're off the hook on the aces slow roll. Now it would be really good to have aces, right? Because <laughs> you really believe that I don't have Oh, Sir Coon. Historically, when people put a lot of money in, they like their hand. That's the thing that bodes poorly for my hand. I mean, it's... T it, it Would you do that with it's Ace? Tough. The this, is a, this is a pass. It, I mean, for Phil Locke right now. It really, because of the Premier League, it's a pass. So right? I think you know so. I can fold. Honestly. <laughs> which is sucks, and which is why he should have called. But uh, Phil might just get stubborn. But I mean, wow. he's, it looks like he's starting okay. to realize it's just not a good spot for him. Clock, I need a, I need a minute he's, or less. Uh, he's been, been quite. Clock. By the way, everyone at the table probably also because they've been hearing Phil's like all the hands from yesterday. They're probably like not have no idea what he has right now. I really think they might not. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know if I'm good enough player to pull. It's one of the like things about I don't Phil that's like so great about him. I don't that see enough hands. You antics, online players see a million hands a day. Like, you can fold this anything. Like, you can fold aces in free flop. You guys are so like, good. He's crazy. <laughs> like, what does he have right now? Does he have like two nines? Like, how what much the time hell? do I have? How play this hand? You know, he just says all these crazy things. You hear about these weird hands with the four five offsuit, and you're just. I mean, how do I look if I just if I just play really careful? I would have 200. Let's see. 
I can maybe still get some points. I mean, I have to, I have to make the right decision, right? Because it hurts when you make the wrong decision. That was the apt sort of uh, expression of how one feels having a laid out Queen's ball spot, isn't it? You felt you that when you should have the three bet. It's too bad. I took him off and, all uh, of these eight uh, times. Right there, like that may be the first time uh, in this I all those out of his range. we've gotten yeah. to see uh, uh, how the tactics and the league can, can, make the, can make the decisions extreme. Premier League is very different. It's unlike any other form of poker. I love how the points work. There's points and dollars awarded for every place you get. I think strategy is very important here. If you lose in the first heat, you still have the opportunity to make it to the finals. It's different than any other thing on the tournament circuit. Love the 21 hands, the blinds go up. I love the eight-handed, I love the point system. So you just want to win as many points as possible in the first few heats. There's a few people playing this this year that haven't played in the past, and I think for them it's going to be a little bit more of an adjustment. I haven't really figured out completely what, what their crash strategy is, but we'll see how it goes. Definitely ready for the kind of strategic implications of the Premier League and this point system. So bring it on. Welcome back to Playground Poker Club here in Montreal, where Season 7 of the Premier League continues. Heat 3 is well underway as the pros play for points. Let's get back to the action. Oh, Ace King, what a monster. Premier League Poker yes. Playground Poker Club here in Montreal. There's a $100,000 guarantee going on in the background and a $125,000 buy-in front and center. Who, who in the Premier League is is capable of being super sick? Is it maybe Esfandiari? Is it? Uh, yeah, Bobby I think Warner the Warner I think Antonio's, yeah. Antonio's probably number one yeah, yeah, in just the relentless <laughs> pressure. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, loves the pre-flop yeah. pressure. It's you one of his favorite five, things. Yeah, yeah. You know, other people. I mean, Selps is a little bit more one of those people. Yeah. Um, after those two, who's next? I mean, maybe six thousand. I mean, maybe those two are probably number one and two. Oh. I'm, I'm probably up there. I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm as high as Antonio or Vanessa, but I mean I've been known to, I've been known to, to play kind of aggressive at times as to well. To be extreme. Yeah. I mean I didn't have points and I came out trying to do Normal. it on day one. Yo, if I so, face up, let's but, um, say I have two nines or whatever. Yeah, no, I, Antonio's, Antonio's definitely. A pair. Definitely a, a pressure player. I mean, in the one drop tournament, by the way, <laughs> when he had a bunch of chips three. on day so two, I mean, I really need to get he was, I remember here. people saying, because I wasn't at his table all day, but on yeah, day yeah. two, when he just really built up a chip lead going to the final table, it's, I remember uh, people saying he was playing every hand at his table, so. I mean, he was at a pretty good table to do it at, but that's the point. Like when Antonio's like, Coleman? we're talking about in the spot that Kuhn's at. And this is a nice little thing by Kuhn. I mean, he's... You know, obviously, he could have just three bet you know, Vanessa, theory, but he's decided, theory, you know, I don't have to three bet her all the time. I'll later. just shadow her because I might find a spot later on in the hand to put pressure on her. So he just flatted her raise here, and you know, like she's under pressure you call, right now. You know, even though they both have nothing. You call. Now, if I'm Kuhn, your skill set. He cannot think that his ace five is good because when it goes check check. Check. At this point, I mean, if she has queen jack queen ten, she's betting. So um, like, I don't know if I now it's too late. I think you know you can try to pick up so a spot. Later, that was such a non-board changing card. Three. He's got to give oh, up. But I, I really right? would have liked uh, with Kuhn a bet there on give the turn. Try to, the to get Selps to fold a low pair or a bigger ace high. I think he missed the spot to pick this up on the turn. And I'll say actually, I don't like this bet. I think Selps might call it. You think that it's probably for your average player? Just because the board didn't change at all now. Oh yeah. Well, it's. I mean, can't say. It's, right. it's you know, not really good bet at all, is it? Like uh, non -humble It's guy not horrible. You don't want to say, well, I mean, yeah, Kuhn I has fold. figured out that his hand right, is good. Right, that looks bad. See, he's thinking so. into the future, JG. So there. I, <laughs> I just, I would have liked the bet. Oh, she, 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 she put it down? She put it down, yeah. 
So I guess it worked out. But um, I really would have liked to bet on the turn by him. I feel like when it goes check and then she checks the turn. Here's the thing. If Vanessa had decided to check like clean or jack high on the flop, she would bet the turn on a, on a nine, right? So when she checks the turn again, she's basically saying I have a showdown value hand and ace five isn't good. And I really would have liked the turn bet by him. The river bet... If I was Selps, I would have been really suspicious about that. I mean, is it, you know, she talked about uh, in heat number one that she kept leveling herself against Seaver. And I think she meant by that that, you know, these things are so obvious that I'm kind of, that I'm kind of going another level and saying they're so obvious that they can't be. It was almost like the exact same thing against Kuhn right there. Well, it was so obviously to me, like, or to think you just call there. It's well, no, very the question, sort of here's thing. what I would say. I don't wonder whether or not, I mean, Vanessa, I mean, Seaver has a reputation as being, like, an amazing player. Like, you guys talked about this yesterday, and I, I was back here. I heard you and Gross. Seaver's actually a very good heads-up no-limit player. He's played a lot of it online. I mean, he used to room with Ike, who's known to be maybe the best in the world or one of the top three. I mean, Seaver's Isaac a great... Yeah, yeah, and so Seaver has all that experience, plus the no-limit hold'em experience. Now, Kuhn is not, you know... I'm sure Selfs doesn't know Kuhn call. quite as, as well as she knows Seaver and not as much experience. And the thing is, I think against Seaver, she's giving Seaver so much credit that she's always wondering what level Seaver's on. Whereas I, my guess is Selfs probably feels a little more comfortable against Kuhn, but maybe almost not giving him enough credit there. And here we got a hand. It'll be interesting to see how many streets uh, this gets bet on. Uh, Sorrell free bet. Oh. I mean, they got the same hand. We're, we're almost certainly going to get the showdown. The question is how big is the pot going to be? At this spot, like, there Mizzy might, must be a little worried. Back. Yeah. This, this turn might get checked back. If you got ace queen in position, I, who's in position here? It's uh, uh, Phil. It's Sorrell's oh, Phil. in the big blind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. And Sorrell three better, right? Yes. Sorrell's probably going to. Well. My guess is that we don't get barrels on both streets. My guess is one of the streets gets checked, but we'll see. Right, because this action, both players will be realizing that ace-king is in the other's wheelhouse, in a sense. Ace-king or, you know, ace-jack or jack-nine have gotten there, you know, plus... I mean, ace-jack or ace-nine, sorry. And so, I think right now... And there weren't a lot of draws on the flop, so it's not like you can really give your opponent credit. Like, there's a flush draw now, but and straight draws, but that wasn't there on the flop. So there's not too many hands that your opponent can have other than value hands. So, Oh, I thought Sorrell had already checked this uh, turn, but uh, this is an interesting, interesting barrel. And is this just fine. based on the fact that uh, he feels like Locke has overall been so loose <laughs> that you just, have to, you just have to bet twice? Yeah, some of it's also the relative positions. I mean, Lack did open the button and then just call a three bet, so his range is pretty wide. So um, I think Sorrell, because of that, and I don't mind it at all, and I might do it sometimes too, just go for the barrel. And with a, a blank like the five of clubs, he might even go for a river bet it, instead of uh, check. Because I think what you're thinking at this point is if my opponent has like ace-8 suited or ace-10, you know, and I check, he, he might not go for value with that, but he very well might call the value bet. So it's one of those spots where, I mean, you're always getting called if you're beat, but... If, if you do have the best hand, you, you very rarely get more value by checking. Is it is it time for what Phil Locke calls the value bluff blocking bet? Oh, who, by Mizzy? Yeah. yeah I mean, well, you it, know, it we should be... make a, a bet, a value bet on the, on the small side, so in case he's beat, he doesn't get raised type of thing. I mean, there's a lot of theories about that. I mean, the flip side is that if you, you, you know, if a big bet will look more like a bluff, and you're more, you know, maybe if you're just as likely to call by like ace eight if you make a big bet because they think maybe you're bluffing, you know, it's hard to say. But yeah, I don't expect Mizzy to make a huge bet here. Like it looks like 80 or 90k, which is 70 half to pot. Yeah, 70, less than half. So yeah, it's it's uh, not a big bet. And actually, Locke's in a spot here because he really doesn't beat any value hands. I mean, he's actually pretty going to be tying I here is call. actually his. Is it his, it's his best value result, in a sense, right? The, there is no way that Mizzy has ace-10. Yeah, it's very unlikely Mizzy has ace-10. I mean, it's true. It's, it's a kind of tough spot for Phil, but I feel like this is one of those spots where Mizzy you're a little, be. you're very unsure about it. You are beating bluffs. You are blocking an ace. And, you know, the bet's not that big. You're getting a pretty good price. I, I think Phil, in the end, is going to 
probably call this. A pretty unhappy call, but but call. Is is Phil Locke saying to himself right now, I call and lose, and then I'm going to be in a spot where I folded the Queen's pre-flop, and now I've done all my money with the ace-queen against Sorrel Mizzy. I mean, he has to be thinking that he's just making a hash of this Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's, he's, he's, it's no he fun. He cannot be happy right now. Yeah, see, he's looking at the pot. I mean, I just think he's he's going to end up calling this. Uh, is there anything about the way this hand has been played where Mizzy has decided to be a little bit aggressive because he's putting his seven points or putting pressure on Phil Locke's three points? I, I don't really think so. I mean, I think this is just a spot where Mizzy's just... Like I said on, on the turn when he was deciding whether or not to bet, I mean it's a spot where Phil's range is pretty wide, and ace queen. Even though you don't, you're not really. If you think Phil is capable of calling down pretty light, then it's a spot where you know if you think maybe he'll call all three times with an ace, you might as well bet. That way on the turn by betting, hands like king queen queen ten king ten, you're all charging them, making them either fold or or pay to continue. I, you know, for a long time, I've actually had quite a bit of respect for Phil's game. And I, I feel like um, all, throughout the poker community, he was not respected while he decides to fold, which I, I don't hate the fold because of what you're saying. But, uh, I actually thought he would probably call. I do not have a seven in my hand. No. Um, I think a lot of people gave Phil a lot of flack. And part of that is just the image that he puts on when he's on the table. Oh, he's kind of being ridiculous. Well. Sometimes you see him play ridiculous hands when the cards get turned over. Well, Phil Locke making some big laydowns in tonight's team, but none as big just yet as the one he made in Premier League Poker 4 against the eventual winner, David. The thing is, is, I feel a bit sad because Daniel wasn't rewarded for his great call. You made a great call pre-flop, and you weren't rewarded. Yeah, I know I wasn't. Fold. Fold. I was so sick that Queen High call against me, and then I like. Fold. He limped in, right? Five. So you raised? And it is you a relatively big final table. You know, there's $900,000 <laughs> in prize money being dished out here. That's, you know, that's, that's pretty, pretty serious. serious. Such a long ban for the tournament. Yeah. Cool. Are you banned from all these days? Of course not. So Locks called this Queen Five out of the big blind. You know, flopped the best hand. Okay. Turned into a very good call. Now, of course, he flopped the hand. He has to check. See, he checked. I mean, he yeah, hit something. Wow, trips he flopped. Yeah, wow, yeah, I didn't even see that. That's 9,000. Hold. Destroyed this flop. Of course, he has to just call. They've played a lot of flops together, Benjamin and Locke. Uh, not only did they meet, I think, several times in the matches, maybe three times, but they always seem to be deep against each other. You know, they... These guys have played some hands. If, if, if Benjamin calls here, you just have to say there's something wrong with his, I don't know, his inner clock tonight, right? Wow, yeah, he's, he's, he's basically drawing dead here. And I mean, he's, he's running hard, hard. He's thinking that Locke has got a draw or float. I yep, mean, yep. And well, well, Dave's now drawing live. It's thirty-six thousand. He's counting his stack. He's got a hundred ninety-eight thousand. Hundred five in the pot. And it's just weird because obviously, if the heart comes, is he getting paid any money at all? Yeah, he doesn't want the queen of hearts to come. I'll tell you that. Nope. He doesn't want an ace. Nope. It was a little unlucky the Nine of Hearts did come for him. Check. I was just thinking, Phil Locke had to be slightly worried about his hand there. I mean, you're not getting paid off that often. A lot of times a guy's showing up with a hand that beats you there, right? Straight, flush. Absolutely. He folded! He snapped, folded! Phil, he snapped, folded! Not good. Ten of clubs. He folded three five and and he sh and Benjamin showed it that, that quickly. Pocket ten. Yeah, ace ten with the ace of hearts. 
He showed the ten of clubs. He showed the ten of clubs. Yeah, it is hard ten of clubs for sure. And Phil Locke, that hurts. How tall does he feel right now? Phil, oh you're stunned. My. I'm stunned. Oh, Philly boy. When are you going to learn how to play poker? Better results have popped out with RL. Like your first full right. right. Phil Locke is, is just not hard. feeling it. This he didn't an ace. Just 16 hands played, and he's no. barely I, I, over 200k. I, I and everything seems much. to be I'll going wrong that. for him. Coon and Mizzy. I'll bet you didn't have King Jack. You'll bet that he didn't have King Jack? Yeah. Full. That you get even money. Okay. Unless you have inside information. I've, other than 6, just nine full, no. I'll bet another hundred of the hundred that he did not have King Jack. Call why, dude, why are you always killing action on the side? <laughs> <back? laughs> I already owe him a hundred. I'm trying to get my hundred back. <laughs> so Kid, this is coming we from the. Uh, back, but but like, I'm from the you know, band I got away over here. Like, I'm trying to take both hands. And Jack came in with an action killer trying to jump on Mizzy side. I think I might need odds. And. You know, yeah, basically, if someone's trying to make a bet with someone and someone 100. else pipes yeah. in, like, oh, yeah, I'll offer, King and Shaq offered, like, better odds on the same side as Mizzy was on. Mizzy was getting give was get that. You want my, you want no, my side. No, no, Mizzy was trying to work. You mean you want my side. You're trying to And then Shaq jumps in the middle of this negotiation and offers, like, We're good, though. We're to one to one. Shaq offers two to one. And then they were like, you know, someone's trying to make a bet here. And then here's Shaq doing it again. I guess he can't help himself. If you roll, I uh, spent a lot of time with Phil Lock and Antonio S. Van and Diari. You really need to know the ethics of when to butt in and, and not and butt out when they're when they're on a hustle because these top bets are just constant, right? I mean, there is, I mean, there's a lot of unspoken rules, aren't there? Yeah, the prop the prop bets are nonstop. <laughs> There probably yeah, was it's, not it's a king or a jack in his hand that I would even go as that far no, sometimes out. Sometimes there's one of them. Been. Sometimes there's one of them, you know? I That's Usually there's check. none of them. So Phil Locke, uh, by the way, has, whether or not he wanted to come in here and play a lot of hands, he's gotten hands. a lot of hands. He's had to play. Hands, and this is another, and it's been a tricky one. one. Do I'll yeah, slow I down on the turn, though. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, give me three. kind of wondering what's happening. <laughs> and if you're asked to explain I mean, I the purpose of that bet, <laughs> do, do you want to, do, do you want to trade maybe in? get to a mellow no. better race? <laughs> no. or is it yeah, just, I mean, I think that's, that's That one's going to the thinking. grave. Unless they vlog about it. Or the rest, the fellas. Or the yeah. Rest, yeah. He That's does. He does do I mean, strange things. I will tell things. the truth once I, you know. if we're settling a bet and I'm involved, involved in getting something. Even I'll play five. Could you be a king jack? How about that? Yeah. I'm well, saying he couldn't be king jack. Whatever he has. Wow, well, it's it's quite amazing. I mean, aside from the actual prop yeah. bet. The, you can really hear what the pers they're, they're talking about. Obviously, Phil's hand, right? Yeah, they're thinking. The queen, and they think he was quite weak. like, yeah. And so, uh, he folded a weak hand, and Shaq now is going to lay five to one that Phil couldn't beat King Jack. He's laying five to one. Yes. If if anyone hopped on that right now, they they could print. We know that Phil folded Ace Queen. So Phil Locke down to 197,000. Oh. Oh, he's right, he's already had home. two queens and ace queen, and he's just gotten and he's a little stashed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, actually, this is uh, working out quite well for me. Black and yeah, Selfs are not I doing well. Two the of the people have less points than me. So. And sort of the theory is that if you're in a bad spot like you are, you kind of. Pick out the four people uh, in the league that you're going to finish ahead of, right? Yeah. And maybe maybe one extra for good measure. There's some German word, actually, for that, whatever it is. Like, so, yeah. Schadenfreude. Yeah, Schadenfreude. JG, making moves. Normally I don't like, but I guess in Premier League, you need to do a little bit of it, sort of, otherwise. So right now, you have Schadenfreude for Selbst and Locke, who are seventh in the end of this. And Shaq, I guess. Yeah. Could be both of us. So Sorel, uh, so, I could have a hand so. Did Sorrell right. rebet this have and get more bet by Jeff Gross? What wow. odds? And this is completely unexpected. On a million dollars, I'll give you four to one that you won't four bet. <laughs> okay. Or five I won't four bet. Yeah, 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 a, exactly. You could have got me on a big one. <laughs> well played, sir. That's the JG style. Okay, now you know Phil. I always have it, Miz. 
Phil, now I just need to know JG's hand, and you have to give me $70. Yeah, we both our hands, we'll get that one hit. No, he has to, you have to give me $70, and I have to know his hand. Oh, no. Wait, how does he know you just said that? Is Do I need to know you as a tour or not? The players just, haven't heard it yet. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but you can get Phil to pay you 30. No, no, I don't want to. I'm not really thinking tactically. He knows what people were saying about him. It's too much. He knows how many points he's got, and he's going to do something with that. I mean, that's the tight, aggressive style. Oh, wow, Phil has aces. Here we go. They run a tough game. They know they're the they're good they're good they're good they're 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 you know, Jeezy's been playing really solid, not making a lot of moves. Oh, 4,000. And uh, so every once in a while you make a move. You get a lot of credit for it. I'm oh. actually, Sorel could have called there for what it's worth. 6-5 suited is exactly the type of hand Four players that if hand. you think somebody is tight and they have a very strong range when they 4-bet you, you could gamble with it. Nice flop for the aces. Okay. Yeah, and 3 is probably going to peel. Well, she might not now with two people behind her. 12,000. Uh, sorry, the small pocket pairs were the death of Vanessa Selps in uh, heat number one. I think she had them maybe six or seven times. And Call 12,000. She really uh, oh. just could not make oh. them work. And Phil Lott during the first heat was saying that he thinks may thought maybe that small pocket pairs are the hardest to play in this format because set mining is not all it's cracked up to be. Yes, the problem is that um, people aren't really playing big pots. Check. I mean, a lot of tournaments and a lot of cash games, sets are great. You get you win big pots, but here you're just not seeing people really like bet their hands aggressively for value. And so, I mean, there's a lot more pot control, and <laughs> sets seem like they're not quite worth as much in this format. I agree. It's interesting comment by Phil. This is why I think Phil's a better player than people. Right. right. Well, he, he actually went further. He said that he was 100% sure that deuces through sixes were a fold under the gun. And then he went in uh, to the, obviously played the heat, and he... Uh, didn't do that. Did, 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 <laughs> didn't do that yeah. like four <laughs> times in a row. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's one thing to say it, and it's another thing to, to fold it. Check. Wow. Did Locke try and let Selbst hang, her, uh, give her yes, chance well, hang herself on the river? Great check because there was not much value in betting. And, uh, I played with Phil before, too. I, I like his check. He checked every street. He bet the flop and then checked every street. Phil, <laughs> no, definitely not your average street player. I think Phil likes to play up his kind of persona that he's a little bit clueless and doesn't know what's going on, but. Uh, I definitely see through it. I think most of us see through it. We know what Phil is capable of. He's probably the most interesting guy in the field. I mean, he is, he's something really special. He just plays a little differently than everyone. I just can't wait to see how, what style, what personality you're going to see. He's got to be, you know, the most fun, unpredictable player to play with. He sees everything completely different than any person I've ever met around in my life including his poker game. Phil Locke is probably one of the most interesting human beings I've ever met in my life. And by probably, I mean he is. $70 in JG's So this is the last hand of the first level, and you can see the somber expression on Dan Shack's face. What, just call it off the It looks like he's at the dentist. I mean, uh, it's, you know, he won this event last season and was all smiles coming in, and he's in pain right now, not having fun. Phil, what did you get in your first hand? means it shouldn't be a flip. But Let's see what, if Danny I mean, Shack subscribes to the Phil Locke philosophy. Like, He's got fives. I feel yeah, like I'm, get, I'm running lucky if I 5, call 000, with queens. He does not subscribe to it. That's I'm kind of not seeing too many people subscribe to it so Yeah, you would have been very lucky to be in a flip. Yeah. I guess I'm lucky not to have queens. I might decide to play the 4-3 suited here. I'm just saying that. He's thinking that Dan Shack's got good hands and that I'm on the button. I've got a little surprise. Unfortunately for him, Shaq doesn't have a very good hand and has two fives. He's not really the hand for Duham when he wants to be up against when he's calling here. Played too many hands. Right, but isn't part of the yeah, plan yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. he feels yeah, like Shaq is gonna—he plays his hands more honestly, and especially so. Yes, right. He's gonna put him on more big.
big pulls, card hands, okay. which I can actually has fives. A game. lot of flops Duham will think will but be very good for him. Will right. we'll be really good for Shaq like as well. Like it's like, so it like this is what I'm saying, but you know, in general, I actually like his call and would do it myself. Oh my goodness. I went broke with nine just to be one of the flops. That is good for him, but that's good for Shaq. There did exist one of them. But I mean, Shaq's still not hating this flop. If he's checking, he's not checking to fold. I'll let you have a hundred and I'll only take like a $3,000 if you probably would have liked, wow, Duham checks it back. We just, you can only lose a thousand back here. It's a bad card for Duham. Right yeah, he thinks it's brilliant. He thinks that he thinks that Shaq's just caught up with today's kick. Now, but unfortunately, Shaq's thinking, wow, he checked back, so Duham very well might have had a showdown. You wouldn't put it back on right now. So Shaq could fold this turn. It's too good that you had the chance, and now it hurts you. I don't really want to hurt you. Okay, Duham, I like his bet actually. Small, which no, Shaq's bet this. Shaq's bet this. Oh, he did. Some of the best in the world. Oh. So do Hummel yeah. calls. You know, like this, he's, buying a, he buy, he's buying a whole day of that belief, the ace king, and then he can laugh about it later. <laughs> right. like, whatever. I thought that. I thought there were some draws really on the turn. Yeah, he he gets like king, queen, king, 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 king jack, jack etc. That's why you said 100%. Well, so well, I thought you had ace king. By the way, James, you know, because after you brought him, you're 100% unbalanced. You have to balance your range. About every 20th day, I think. Right, that's a... But it's I would be enough. really upset if he didn't have it's ace king. Like that's the only reason Shaq. I gave it you like he's beat uh, like oh, a he had king huge jack. percentage right, of the time when he gets called. It's, it's a 3, bad 500, bet I won't because if Duhamel's has oh, nothing, oh, he's either going to fold or raise. And if Duhamel can beat that, he's going to call. I mean, I can't see Duhamel folding an ace for sure. Maybe not even a 10 for 10k. 10, as a bluff to fold precisely a 10, which check back to flop, is really like the only play. But, um... I, I think this is overall a bad bet. And, uh... Raise to 48,000. Now Shaq's kind of in a spot where, well, is Duhamel turning uh, Aaron to a bluff? And can I beat that? I'm, I'm not sure whether or not he'll call, but that's what he's thinking now. He's thinking he's never raising me with an ace, really. Right. He would never raise with an ace. So, really. what does he have? I mean, he might talk himself into a call here. Just because it looks like, you know, Duhamel checked back the flop, just called... You know, how could he, did, did he make pocket sevens? So, um, or is he, you know, is he turning clean jack into a bluff, which he might talk himself into that. So. Jeez, look the way he's grabbing those chips. It, it, it almost feels like he might blow up here. And I, do you get in these weird spots sometimes uh, in this Premier League where you're so concerned with what other people's perception of you that you actually, you know, get a little bit extreme? He's like, they think I'm so tight that if I raise here, it has to be the aces so full type of thing. It's possibly considering that. I mean, Dan Shack could definitely have the perception that people think I'm so tight and solid that like maybe he thinks people try to bluff him more than they would in other spots. Or maybe not, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure what Dan Shack thinks about how other people play with Rack. Yeah, I could blame you. You probably are off the jacks. I mean, Queens is like, yeah, like I said, a big play. Just feel like you were floating the jacks. You are like lost your mind. Even though it is You're like the King same Queen thing, since I don't have Queens, but you don't know that. Oh. Wow. And for Dan Shack, no fun. He had his aces cracked uh, in the heat number one by the King Nine suited. Years. And now he has yeah. to look down at the, the ignominy or whatever that I word is. I don't know what you have. It feels like over maybe 150. Wow, is that going to look like such a bad call on TV? It's definitely not the worst call. First first level in the books, Brian. What's the story for you when looking at this leaderboard? Well, the story is all the players with no points are doing bad. And all the players with points are doing well. Is, is uh, that why you've just go. done a little jig around your chair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we continue with Heat 3 of the Party Poker Premier League Season 7 after the break. He balances his smile range really well. I smile all the time. What can I do? It's sort of a protection blocker. Unbelievable. Uh, he's slow roll. This is Party Poker Premier League action from Heat 3 here at the Playground Poker Club in Montreal. We're still eight-handed and nobody wants to leave with the bagel. Let's head right back to the action with Jesse May and Brian Rast. Uh, I know the number's under 30, so I'll do No, I can only do 24. 
I honestly have I mean, never heard this song. Very, very, song, very so old. I don't know what it's like It just seems ridiculous. I think it's actually. I should have asked him. It's Mad. Very old song. Okay, well, I could have picked him up in three hours. I'm the worst dancer. He's the sharpest guy in the world. He hangs out with it, you know. It's not just like one specific thing. There's two people more than two things. Whenever, like, whenever at table full of young, young, like 25 to 35 year old I mean, poker players 30, offering like, like math just prop bets, you should be very worried. Right. They, they probably know the answer to it. <laughs> I almost want to bet 30 just to whack it. Prove a point. Yeah, right? of course you could win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 How much juice are we talking here? I mean, what? Prove a point. Prove in your face. Prove a point that I took a bad bet on one. It really is this combination. See three raised eleven thousand. I remember actually when we did it, the bet they like when someone told me about it, we had like a sample of like twenty five or whatever it was, and I was like thrown away. And then of course we tried it out, and it was like, yep. Dan Coleman like two has yet to move a chip in this heat. Um, Does that mean if you have like a random number generator that shows like from one to well, three hundred and sixty five? Uh, as we know, he's you find the same so number of player. And I think Coleman's strategy right? is going to be to uh, you put, wait you till a couple people get knocked out in the blast. Yeah, 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 yeah. And start yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you should see 166. Wait till there's a 30 course. big live yeah. average stack. Yeah. And, then just, <laughs> and then see what's up. Just make some oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> A little, and, uh, I feel for Dan Shaq right now. Uh, he's really seven thousand. Obviously, as, as well as Premier League went for him last season, he is going to really be made to work for his apples this season. Wait, this is Danny boy. I had the super straight. When all twenty-four people, when the first twenty-four people say their name, say their birthday, I'll tell you, I have the twenty-fifth person. They have to have the twenty-four out of three sixty-five. Normally, I would. This Premier League probably is the ultimate format for the adage, the rich get richer yeah. type of yeah, thing. It flip, really yeah, does yeah, points bestow rolls. riches on you. Have it just been queen, queen, jack, yeah, is jack. that the, your experience from the past? Yeah. Well, well, it, it always yeah. seems like, you know, I think in every single season, uh, the players who have won the first heat that they've played in have gone on to do oh. very, very well. Fold. Interesting. Fold. Just got to win that first heat, that's all. No right, that's problem. That's pretty much the Premier League right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. Win the first heat. That's very simple. I mean, geez, if, you, if they just told me that, I'd probably be doing better right now. Heat seven reads nine thousand five hundred. I mean, Jeff has shown that he doesn't really like to. He doesn't like to call. defend I mean, out of position. No, he doesn't. I mean, as we saw, Phil. Phil's opening the seven three suited here. I think Jeff might decide to. No. Call. Definitely could have seen him three bet that. And overall, it would be a better play, right? I mean, not just because of this hand, but just because of, Call. you know, Phil's frequency of raising in late position and that's Well, sort of yeah, thing. I feel like on the button there, Phil's going to open pretty wide. Three Jeff has more chips. Jeff has a lot more points. He has a very good hand. And also, just in general, I, I think three betting out of the small blind is, is oftentimes preferable. See, they well, check. Just because yeah, it kind of forces the big blind out. And, Puts yeah, pressure when injuries. you call. Sometimes you get you squeezed go. by the big blind. So, like Clementine's not all injuries. Interestingly, in, in in heat number two, there were several times where Jason Kuhn uh, elected to flat out of the small blind uh, rather than three bet, and it brought you in every time. <laughs> I yeah. think it happened like three or four times. Like, yeah, I mean, and now you're you have one bet. more person out of position too. Yeah. Who, um, Sorry. you know, oftentimes with how small race thousand. sizes are in tournaments, can have a pretty wide range of hands. It's kind of hard to put the big blind on a hand in a lot of those spots. So, I, I kind of like a dynamic of three betting a little more often, I mean, not all the time, out of the small blind and calling a little more small often out of the big blind. I usually like that a little bit. Jeff's not feeling very comfortable right now. But um, he does have a pair and a gutter. It's more than sure what Jeff's going to do. Probably considering all three options, to be honest with you. What do you got? I was a little nervous. Last time you smiled at me like that, you poor me with aces. Yeah, you did. And now you fold. He balances his smile range really well, you know? Sometimes you all the time. What can I do? Just keep it consistent. Yeah, raise for the work. I was like, I love the Miz. I'm going to play honest today. Appreciate it, man.
I thought I could. I don't think you. Had, you didn't. Have, you couldn't sustain a raise. Jeff really doesn't want to play. Oh, not for me. Play from pots where he's kind of calm. He maybe. likes to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, play the tight, yeah. aggressive style. Either he's putting yeah. pressure on, or most of the time he's just getting out. Yeah. What's the game? Right? It's been working out for us. It'll, it'll be a real crime against humanity if we don't get to hear this test. Uh, because I mean, now everybody wants to know it now. I mean, we got to. Sorrell's got to get a bet down. Yeah, 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 Sorrell's trying really hard. It's such Anyone a fun, it's an amazing game. Wow. Oh, oh, sure. This is not my game. I'll I mean, tell you what, this if, can't be the place if you and Antonio both fail at this, games this games feels like kryptonite. I mean, of course it could make a living taking this way. A minute and a half max. Say what? The game lasts a minute and a half max, so you don't have to worry about... Oh, are they doing it now? In my head, nothing lasts a minute and a half. After it's over, it'll be like the Kane history of the unfolding thought will last longer than a minute and a half. Beautiful. I mean, Phil Locke has a way with words. I mean, that was just. That was just. I mean, the guy really should be a writer or a poet or something. Just dictate and have someone. Maybe if he writes, it wouldn't be nearly as effective. No, it's everything with Phil is. There's a performance art aspect to it, isn't it? I mean, it's. Uh, wow, Selbst opted not to raise in position in the blinds with two sevens. Blind on blind. It makes me. The cards are correct. I'm, I am a bit surprised. I didn't invent watermelon, but I know the guy who did. Sometimes well, it's, it's I wonder. Just a, is, is it just a pot control thing, really? I mean, people want to bet seven thousand. You know, I mean, or what you said before about I don't want to be three betting. That's where I'm just going to have to just fold to a four bet. Yeah, but see, that's this. That was a different spot. I mean, the spot with Phil with the queens is like after he four bets and puts it in, you know, fifty-five thousand. Then when he. Kuhn shoves and Phil's deciding for his whole stack in tournament life. I mean, if Selps raises to 12K there, if, if she gets limp three bet, which is, I think, less likely in this spot, then, then it's likely that when Kuhn three bets a field of five players that he will then shove for his stack. You know, he would still only be limp three betting to like 30 or 35K, which now Selps could still decide to call and play a pot. You know, a seven is very strong. I'm surprised she didn't raise that, so. He's a realtor, he doesn't play poker? Yeah. He just, I think he just got started in real estate. Uh, oh, really? Uh, a long time. She's, she's taking pot control really, to an extreme. That, like, he was like a trust fund kid, but then other people and like, no, that's not true at all. Well, just, based on that, she should probably bet to protect and then check the river, or check uh, now and so so just try and get to a cheap showdown. Well, if she yeah, did bets summer. now, I mean, it's definitely yeah, mostly yeah. a protection bet. Right. I mean, it's pretty hard. The only yeah, hand she could like really expect to get called so by that she beats is a six. So, you know, most of the time she's just betting to get either one or two over cards to fold. Usually, I would assume my opponent has one over card here. Uh, it's been far and few between Pots for Vanessa Selps in this Premier League so far, and uh, fun to see a character tester. The flip side, though, is that when you check that back in position, you've kind of entered a, a zone where you've pretty much turned your hand face up. I mean, you never really have better than a queen. Um, you know, unless you're you're being super tricky. So you've, you've kind of just said, hey, I have like something in between a bad queen to like ace high. That's kind of what you said you have. So it kind of lets Missy play very well against her on the river. By betting there, you uncap your range and keep it more open. So there, there are some other advantages to doing that too. That's, that's, that's really interesting. It's because I like practicing for the RL. I know, I should have known. I just didn't see, I didn't see that's that's to pay you. Yeah. Yeah. Here five comes Kuhn. Eleven thousand. Fold. And this will be unusual. I mean, uh, Jeff Gross should think about this because uh, he could find some reasons actually just for flatting here, right? No. Seed eight, we raised thirty thousand. Too strong. Fold. Too strong. Again. Yeah, I think too strong. And. Um, you know, if Jeff is gonna if Jeff is gonna do some light three bets now and then, he also has to three bet with his big hands. I mean, it's kind of part of the, the tight aggressive oh. style. I mean, he's, he just doesn't flat that much. You know, how often have we really seen him flat? Right. Hold. Gross is the one person that Kuhn's not gonna be thrilled to play a big pot without a position because he doesn't have that threat. 
but uh, at I mean, the same Stone's time, got a yeah. lot of chips, decently playable hand. I don't know what he's gonna. I really don't think he's gonna four bet. How about that? <laughs> I don't know what he's gonna call. Yeah, he's getting good price. Two five call. So not too surprised to see him call. Heads up. Five, kind of an interesting flop, actually. It is, and I just feel like, even though he's out of position, that Jason Kuhn is more comfortable playing a big pot now than Jeff Gross. Jeff Gross is kind of, even though he's got the chip lead, he's kind of set his stall out. See I don't check. want to play big pots. Very surprised Gross didn't see bet this. But, um, I mean, I, I feel like a see bet there works. You've you got a lot of fold equity C5 against check. pairs smaller than the 10. So, and uh, it's, you don't get raised too often. He's in position. See, they check. Uh, check, check. Right, I mean, this is the, 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 the three bat and freeze, really, from Gross. Yeah, uh, well, it's kind of like what you're saying. It looks like Gross <laughs> really doesn't want to play a big pot. I mean, he's kind of just slowed down three bet. And, <laughs> Gonna take it easy. Now, I mean, he's probably gonna value bet this. I would hope. <laughs> he's waited. <laughs> Doesn't look happy <laughs> with the hand. That's almost always good at this point. <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances that Jason Koo will yeah. check three jacks <laughs> on the river? That's there? Back That's still correct. That's still That's still I mean, you can yeah. understand Jeff's sort of, what, without the individual moves, the overall philosophy, it's, it's worked so far. Out of the he's got a lot of positive reinforcement for what he's doing. Well, you know, yeah. this is what, and this is why on day one I came in and I just, I just buckle up gamble early the and started. You know, I just hope they have the best win some pots. Yeah. I knew there were going to be a number of people, especially the people who were to my left, that their attitude is when it's deep stacked in the first couple of levels, they're just going to chill. They don't want to play big pots. They're going to play super pot control, not value bet light. All this, all these things, no, and um, it's the anti theory. They're all doing this, so I have to do that. Well, a lot of them come from a tournament background. They're not comfortable playing 100, 200 big blind, deep stack pots. They want to wait, just kind of play solid, wait till the blinds get big, and you know, like a guy like Dan Coleman, who's a sit and go player. Like he's, he's pr he probably five you know, really super comfortable. He plays 30, 20 big blind stack there. situations all day. Just trying to quietly go Why about gamble it. early and play a bunch of big pots Fold. with you know deep stack Fold. turn and river decisions and weird spots for him, rather than uh, flop and pre-flop decisions that he knows Fold. a lot better. And you know, I think Gross is a little bit more from from that standpoint of he has a lot of tournament experience, and I think at the full ring table with the players, he considers tough lineup he's gonna wait kind of try to grind down a few spots wait till the stacks get deeper and then play his kind of tight aggressive pre-flop game where right. he's three betting light you know hold yeah and he just i mean that was a, a spot where a lot of people would have called any two coleman and he didn't even want to peel off the flop he was closing the action um it was not a big raise yeah uh it was also decision time for dan shack there and he made the decision quickly i mean he you know coon's been opening white three uh with a high frequency. We've seen he's had <laughs> hands every time. True, but, but uh, Kuhn was under the gun. And under the gun open, um, he's gonna get a little more, bit more respect, and Shaq was out of position, so um, I, th I think that's probably why he called instead of three betting, which, I mean, I, I think Wait, what was the second one? I don't think, I think that's a fine play that time. You know what Shaq. Five questions that you can't get. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's a different thing. Big what is sigh, it? though. Dan Shack, uh, he no, needs to connect with the board right the now, and it's not happening. Yes. I mean, Dan Shack uh, is, uh, yeah. I like the other I mean, he's got to be a little worried right yeah, now yeah, yeah, that's about what he getting a zero again. Yeah. I mean, there was, a, I think, in one of the Premier League seasons, as Jason Kuhn stacks him up, Roland DeWolf went into the, the final heat, and he needed to only finish any place but last to make the, the final table. Don't tell me. Well, he folded, you know, nearly, I think it was 100 hands he folded. Yeah, but you're second you're comfortable where you are, you want to stay in your place. I mean, there was a couple of all-ins, but it was... No, 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 you I don't want to take the room. You know, you sometimes, like, like the one thing, the room, every, what everybody like, knows you don't that know it's any, the one thing you don't want to happen. Something conspires to make it happen. Wow. Yeah. 
he had to knock no, him and last to, to have what happened. Well, just make the next game. Or he was going to make the playoffs. Hotel 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 playoffs. Hotel hotel but I mean, okay. just, but it, he was going to make the final. He, he was going to go straight to the final if he just came in seventh or better. Out of oh, okay. So, it, you know, the only strategy for him was to fold every hand. Another interesting thing, though, is that, I mean, it is true that, I don't, I'm, I don't know if the structure was the same, but on this structure, there's definite advantages to not coming in at the very last. It was not true. It was not true. It was, not true. It was, it was the, the spread. Was now it definitely provides incentive to jump up a spot, not just make the final table. And I think that's why they've made so, the yeah. No, I, yeah, I think the structure is very, very cool, very good. Because of those tweaks, because of the points that give out money during there. So by the way, even if it was almost impossible for you to make it, you'd still have incentive to win your heat. Because it'd be worth like 28000 or whatever. So, uh, you know, there's always, there's a lot of incentives, even within the, to, to move up and do well. Who got away with your position. Was it you? So no, Kuhn, with, is this a, a loose peel from the big block? Not now, perhaps. Um, it was too yeah, early. I think against an under-the-gun open, or, you know, early position open, ace three ops is kind of loose. 10,500. But I mean, I think this is part of what that Kuhn's strategy like is now. Kuhn's yeah. strategy is going to be to gamble in, in, in a lot more of these spots that he was, he was definitely not calling us in the last two days. 100% pulling the history out suit to these kind of opens. And there is a big psychological thing. I mean, you know, guys like Locke and Self and Shaq, they're much, much less uh, likely to, to, to put that second barrel in. Uh, well, I don't know if you could ever say that about Phil. I mean, he's shown that he's pretty willing to, <laughs> to do that. But, um, but I mean, I think less likely than before. I think what Kuhn's probably thinking is that Phil's range is pretty wide, even though, based on yesterday, I would say that it's probably less wide. It's actually less wide than Kuhn thinks it is here. But I'm pretty sure Scott had like a big I kind of don't like his call, but I know what he's thinking. He's thinking. He's thinking what you're saying. But I still actually think Ace Three Ops is kind of a fold there. I mean, part of the thing about tournaments is with all the annies in there and like people raising. Just over min raise. A lot of times it's pretty close in those spots. Just because you're getting such a good price, that's, it's not really that bad to call or, or that good either way. So it sort of doesn't matter. Welcome back to Party Poker Premier League action from Montreal. We're at the Playground Poker Club for heat number three of season seven, and action is living up to expectations. Let's get back to the table. There's Phil. Uh, he's probably thinking to himself, you know, based on the cards that I've had, things should have gone a lot better. I mean, obviously they could have gone worse, but based on the cards, he feels like he's been dealt, should be going better. Yeah, Phil is... Phil's pretty happy, probably a little worried right now. Probably not happy with the way things are going. I would not be surprised if um, he's still thinking about the Queen's hand a little bit. Raise 11, now, come on. What's up with this? Is this Vanessa Selp saying, you know, it looks so strong C3 when call. I raise under the gun? Fold, fold. Yeah. Fold. I mean, she has a pretty good hand. Jack-9 suited. Fold. Eight-handed under the gun. I, I think it's fine. I mean, Vanessa's been playing somewhat snug today and she probably thinks people saw that. I think she's probably assuming people aren't really going to mess with her and be three betting her light and she has a good hand. Fold. It's almost 3x. 2.75 on the large side. Anyway. Call. I mean she's she's got to pick up chips at some point too you know. Three right. players. Like, she like, doesn't have to just ladder up one spot. She yeah. has to. She has to pick she, up the chips. You have to. You have to. She's trying to get at least like five points out of this minimum. I mean, hopefully more. I'm sure she's thinking. Points, so, sir. I mean, she can't just fold her way to like five or seven points. You know, these things go on for a while, as we've seen in the last two heats. So you got to win chips at some point. C two check. I am pretty surprised Selps didn't see about this. It's a kind of. There isn't a lot going to this board. She does have. A gutter, two overs to the eight, C3 backdoor bet, club draw. It's a great Fold. board to see bet, I feel like. You I know, mean, what is her perception of Dan, uh, how honest Dan Shack is going to be here and, and what he would have called her with? Um, well, I mean, I'm assuming she's putting him on like a decent hand to call it under the gun. I, I can't imagine that her plan was to check fold here. So 
like to me that would just be very weak play and I'd be pretty surprised so if, if she didn't see bet it I mean is she gonna check raise like I, I I could see that like I said I think Selps has been waiting to maybe like make a move here like early on while she has chips so this could be the spot because we haven't really seen her make a move yet so I mean we can see her cards Brian but is there really is check raising credible here I mean is this there. would she ever play a big <laughs> hand like this would she ever really C2 play a big hand like this C3 re wow all full. wow well, that, I guess true. that's how Dan Shack wins because there we go that was that was strong Holy I think Holy Toledo Dan Shack may be the least experienced but he still knows his way around the belt Shaq Attack. Dan Shaq Attack. Everyone loves Shaq Attack. He's uh, a very sharp poker player that has a lot of money from uh, being smart in the real world, finance, Wall Street, trading, that sort of thing. Dan Shaq is an enigma to a lot of the high stakes players. He does extremely well at the high rollers and the super high rollers. And that much, that you know, his results speak for themselves. You can't argue with that. He's definitely a very dangerous player. He's won the Premier League uh, last time. So you gotta be careful with him. He knows what he's doing out there. He's played quite a lot of poker over the last few years, so very dangerous. He won this last year? Cool, I loved it. He won every 100K, it's unbelievable. He like shows up with his Bluetooth thing in his ear, fresh off the jet, and everyone's like, oh, he's a rich amateur businessman, so he doesn't belong in these things, yet he always finds a way to win. The first time I started playing with him, he, he seemed like he was on the tighter side, but then every once in a while, he splashes around, and he does it in good spots, so. He's definitely a challenging player to play against. Dan Shaq wasn't a huge pot, but how good does he feel right now? He's saying to himself, that's how you play the game. That's how I play the game. And I'm, I'm, I'm here. Oh, that I'm was here. huge for Dan Shaq yeah, because things had not been working out for him so far today. And I'm sure he was getting getting a little bit down on himself. But you know, that was a big move. I mean, when he gets called there, he's got two outs. Right. So... <laughs> Well, maybe. Maybe, actually. <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, you know, maybe running outs, because, I mean, I get, maybe Selps has uh, queens or eights or something. But it's almost I, like uh, <laughs> when you're doing that, it's a little bit of a, a lack of respect for Dan, because Hold. the story doesn't really add up. Hold. So Coleman See, plays a hand. Here we go. Wait. The, the fill lock, deuces through sixes, early position. So far we have oh, not seen a like single person kind of fold one of those. So. <laughs> right. It, it seems like it just doesn't happen. Nobody <laughs> and Phil Lock <laughs> don't agree with what <laughs> Phil Lock had to say about that. It's the definition of temptation, you know. So, um, I feel like King Jack's probably going to win this hand. C2 check. Yeah, but she has to come up with a plan about she how to She is out of position, check. though, which is the one reason why she might not. And in Coleman's mind, the flop smashed her range. That's why he checked back. And now what? Yeah, I think I think that's what he's thinking. Her call. And I mean, it, if you look at her check. cards, they are around there. Four check. Wow. So it looks like Selps is giving up. Oh. I mean, because if you check there and a blank hits, so you're, you're not bluffing the river really very often. I mean, you could, but. She's struggling, Vanessa Selps. She's really struggling. Yeah. Um, I'm, and I, uh, obviously, you know, she, she hasn't had the greatest run of cards since this Premier League started, but she seems a little out of kilter. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of um, the case. You make a couple moves, she things don't work out, oh. and uh, I don't know. You, you start, maybe your confidence goes down a little. I mean, you also start, the thing about Premier League, it's not like... <laughs> You make a couple moves, and you know. I guess if it's one tournament, this. then the next tournament, it's a reset. Oh. Every tournament in like the real world, where you just play a tournament, and the next tournament's not related. There's like a reset button, and you get to right. go over. There's no points in the Premier League. You know, it's the case. Well, now you don't have a lot of points, and you start worrying about trying to pick up some. And right, you know, and the worst thing is you have to. Even if things are really bad, you still have to show up the next day and, and have Scott Seaver. <laughs> You know, you know, needle you. I mean, yeah. you know, which is or Antonio. You know, which is it's tough like down there sometimes. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Hold. Hold. I don't. I don't think Vanessa gets needled Hold. too often. No. There's, there's, there's definitely people that are higher on the that Hold. scale. The like <laughs> pick on me ability scale. <laughs> if I 
9,000. Seat one raised 9,000. There we go, Mizzy. He's, oh. a, he's been waiting. He's been waiting to raise it up with a three high. <laughs> I actually oh. really... I, he, he did have the appearance of playing really tight in, uh, in heat Seat one, four, but four. he had some wow. incredible three bets. Wait, so Dan Coleman, who has not played a single hand, decides <laughs> to defend with the king four offsuit after making a number of tight folds. Didn't he fold the 810 in like a four-way pot or something? Three-way, but he was closing the action. I mean, it, yeah. was, there was, it was inconceivable he could fold that. Now he's, now he's, now he just lost with king four. He's Maybe he's the kind of guy where he, he lost that one pot with the sixes and now he's on tilt, you know? <laughs> I doubt it, but we'll see. Oh, Mizzy's probably good about this. Yeah. I mean, he's got a piece. He's got back door. He's kind of betting this almost all the time anyway on Jack 6 3 Rainbow. Now, Coleman knows this. And as we saw from Heat 1, I mean, he's kind of willing in some of these spots where. Based like, on board texture, he will just put a check raise in. Yeah, it like if, it, if it's like a spot where, okay, my opponent's c-betting 100% of the time, and it's kind of likely that they don't actually have anything, like he'll make a move once in a while. Um, I mean, I think on day one, I, he did it with like 9-8 offsuit or something on king 4-3, which like is a no equity hand. Right. Like it's not like it was a gutter or even like backdoor flush draw, which, you know, those are pretty light equity as it is. He just did it with zero equity. So, I mean, you know, some people will do it in those spots if they have a little something, but Dan's person who, if he calls with the king four offsuit and it's a board like that, he could just decide to check raise, which um, honestly, as weird as it sounds, Mizzy might have peeled with uh, kind of a weird surprise hand and backdoor diamonds on that to a check raise. Seat seven raise, 9,500. And uh, Sorrel has been... Uh, Oh, oh, they both have ace king. Sorrell's. Sorrell is more willing, obviously, to get this in than uh, theoretically than Phil. Phil. Here's here's why. Phil actually is down to 200k in chips, which is only 50 bigs. So now it's light enough that he's want to, and he's uh hoping maybe Phil's gonna make a move with something worse. Keep on re -raise. Also, he's got the same situation where even if Phil doesn't have a good hand, it's like you're putting pressure on a guy. Fold. Who doesn't have many points when you do? Fold so, and I'm not sh sure if this is an easy, a clear cut decision for Phil. It doesn't feel like it. I, I don't think Phil's folding. Right, right. He can't fold. But uh, the four bet feels. I think Phil similar. might just, based on his, he's going to just, here it is, do some weird, like, no, you know, here's what Phil's going to oh, do. So he's going to think about it for a minute. And then he's going to look down. He's going to, like, cut out, like, 110,000 or 129,000 more, slide it on his two cards into the pot. Although maybe, you know what, he might not be in a good enough mood right now to do all this goofiness because things haven't been going well, but it's going to be something like that. But why is jamming okay now, you know, where with Kuhn it was not okay? Is it because he's actually gotten quite low now? He's not really that low. He's got 50 bigs. Well, Part of it is you being the person to put the chips in as opposed to calling it. Right. When you call, you know 100% you have to win the hand. When you jam, there's always a chance your opponent is going to fold. So yeah, Phil's here's putting 100. Did I say 129,000? Because God, that looks close. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you are. Hold on, uh, hold on. It's actually quite scary how how connected you are to the underpinnings of his brain. <laughs> Come on. Seat summary is 125. Ah, oh, 125,500. All right. I mean, I might have to leave the booth now. You can get the next. Next guy to come in here. Seat one re-raise all in. All in call. How does he have ace king now? New jacks. No. Oh, he's slow rolling. Uh, he's slow rolling. Slow rolling the chop. Correct, right? correct. Wait, but correct. You're, you're suited, bro. You should correct. <laughs> I can't help it. It's a chop. Well, it's actually not a chop because I have hard. What do you mean? <laughs> if it was off suit, that would be I, I okay. Would, I would, I would, you got all my points. Right right you get it all too. lined up. You get it right every I time. You're only allowed to slow roll the chop, right? I was thinking if you have ace king, maybe what I'm supposed to do is look at the flop, then pop it on a jack high flop. Right. Wow. Everybody is standing up. Everybody is standing up. I'm not strong enough for four spades, by the way. I don't want to get greedy. This is not a big thing. Everybody stood up. This is the worst. Oh, Mizzy's. 
Let me I deserve to lose. I deserve to lose. Bring it on. Three of clubs. Give him the sweat. Whatever. I'm in Montreal. I'll go have a good time doing something. Three of hearts. Oh, no. Yeah, wow. I, got it. Of course. This this is I gotta be ready to hug you if, if things go wrong. Either way, you're getting a hug. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting. I think he's getting <laughs> uh, get through the hands you're thing good again. Kid. I looked at Dave's King of Hearts. I'm okay with it. I deserve I the really club. Am. I deserve it, don't I? Kind of. I deserve a little it. Bit. Vanessa, <laughs> I deserve it. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. I don't know if I believe it deserves it, but it would be okay. I'd be okay with it. I'm not. You know, I told the gods, the gods saw They were on vacation. It's feeling clubby. Ooh! Oh my god. That's why it goes in the Wow, wow, wow. That is not the Premier League for Phil Locke, but it is not good. Amazing stuff. And, uh, you know, one thing is for sure, Brian, uh, whether or not Phil made good decisions or bad decisions, it's hard to have a lot of tough decisions on these Premier League heats. And uh, that's what he got faced with a lot of. Yeah. Two levels in the books, and obviously Phil Locke out with the bagel. That is going to make things tough for him. And uh, Sorrell could just push on from here as we, the blinds go up to three and 6,000. Two heats in for Phil, and it's just three points going forward. So let's talk about what this means for you in order to get to the final table. Uh, I have to get more chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did I get it right? <laughs> you know it is. It's, uh, it is a beautiful game. And I can't wait to see what some of those hands were. After the break, we return to the Playground Poker Club here in Montreal for more action from the Party Poker Premier League. The third heat is underway, and uh, Jason was chip leader for quite a little while there. Yeah. Sorrell's just pulled ahead, but talk to us about how this heat particularly is going for you. Uh, it's going really great. Yeah. Uh, haven't been in any significant showdowns, and I'm up to almost 500,000. Uh, I had a spot where it was very interesting. Points-wise, I should only be all in with maybe aces or kings right now in this level of the tournament. But Phil is so erratic that I had to play a very big pot with ace-king, and uh, luckily my reap was right and he folded. Uh, but that would have been really bad for me if he just snapped me off with aces or kings. What do you think about your seat at the table? Let's talk about table draw right now. Overall, I'm really happy with my seat. I'm happy with my situation. Uh, I feel very comfortable in this tournament. Okay, well, Heat 3 continues. Yeah. I like that. Lines now 3 and 6,000. And it was an early exit. You know, in these heats, you don't expect exits this early. And for Phil Locke, he's going to have his work cut out for him, Brian. But the dynamics have slightly changed, obviously. A little bit of pressure off Vanessa and Dan, obviously. That is 13,000. And what is uh, classic oh. strategy for Sorrell right now? How should he sure adjust play. based on his <laughs> oh. back? I mean, look, at his, sure look at his spot. He Fold has the, by far the <laughs> sickest spot on the table right now. By, by that, I mean Fold. the best. Oh, I'm start to his left are Soft and Shaq, who we've just said are low on points, are low on chips. I mean, they're not really going to be three-betting a line and messing with him. They're going to be picking their spot. So he has the most chips. He has a lot of points. I mean, he's just going to turn on the heat. He's just gonna like open a lot of pots, and I mean, I'm pretty sure Miz has got that figured out. So, that's why I would be very surprised if we don't see Miz start. Every start opening a lot of pots at the very least. Oh yeah, that was whenever I shot. That's an interesting question. Jeff throws flats from the big blind. Jeff flops a good time. Check. Yesterday he said check also. Miz is gonna see about this. And the viewer said check. I think gross. Yeah, he was like, I knew that. He got so mad. He was like, I didn't say check. And you're like, he definitely said check. He definitely said the word check. You might not want to use the word check anywhere in your conversation when it's on you. Yeah. Yeah. They check this out. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Gross has already good. shown he's not willing to play a lot of pots. Oh, yeah, no, no, I mean, right. he's not defending. He's I mean, he just folded 6-5 like suited and cut off. So when he checks calls he here, so many mistakes. Mizzy's oh, it's probably going to really kind of appropriately put him on, like, maybe a decent ace or, like, king 10 or something. My guess is that Mizzy's not going to barrel it. But if he does barrel it, I mean, three barrel it. He was on rage. Oh, yeah. If you bet the turn, you kind of have to. The wow. I really think yeah, Mizzy's probably just going to oh give this God. one up. I mean, this isn't a great barrel card here. A 10 just improved. He, he can't really yeah. think a good ace is going to fold, so he's just going to give this up and 
not just you know, for TV. Just this is just going to tell now you. Now we can see his gross it. going to value better hand. <laughs> His hand is good. <laughs> okay, so there we go. He is willing to value bet sometimes. Up against your range. Oh, yeah. 25,000. Uh, he's not getting called here very often, though. I can wake up with a hand, you know? Yeah, exactly. And you know he has nothing. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny he was trying to fold his hand. I was like, mm mm. Yeah. No, you're not. Obviously, I so bet I could uh, never going to my call range here, so to get it in goes up a lot because I'm if creating I such raise, a, what'll happen? a three way well, If I raise, you know? how big does like it have I, to be? I, when you I, show up like seven I, big lines. That's just Hollywood, yeah. in my opinion. You know, like what I need to call I like with five big lines. I can't really see Missy raising raise there. there. Yep. Because he's going to fold always. Like he's repping, basically, he'd be repping really nice fives. Fives or that he checked back at the end. But I also have need a bust, you know, so that kind of. Yeah. And, and he's getting his opponent to fold an ace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I was in the big one. You just don't see that very often. Queens. And I was just like, all of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who of the players at the table right now have the least clear yeah, route for uh, what their strategy is right now? Who's got the, I don't know, the, yeah, the sort of the biggest decisions to make about exactly yeah, yeah, how tight yeah. and how loose they should play? Um, I mean, right now, I kind of feel like maybe Dan Coleman's one of them. I mean, he has a decent oh. amount of points, oh. but. He doesn't have a lot of chips. I mean, the other people who have a lot of points as well have a lot of chips, like oh. Coon and Mizzy. So oh. his path is a little less clear, I think. I mean, I feel like, you know, we've already seen what Gross has decided he's going to do. 50,000. Gross is going to ladder his way up again. You know, Coon's going to put pressure. Mizzy's going to put pressure. 50,000. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> He didn't really, did he? Did he? Did he really just open to fifty, Jason Kuhn? He really did. This is a eight and a half times open, and you, you obviously the first thing that the first thing that comes to people's mind is has he made a mistake with his chips? I mean, I can't see Duhamel folding this. I mean, Duhamel has enough points; uh, he's just going to go all in. <laughs> Raise all in. <laughs> so now Coon's going. What am I doing? <laughs> and uh, he 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 really may have made a mistake with his chips because you look at the number he put out. Fold. If he got the tens and the ones confused, nothing I would have made all these Nothing against John, but that was intentional. And uh, thought it was intentional. <laughs> you didn't think it's intentional. So sick. Yeah. I never yeah, shoot angles ever. I know. I, yeah, of course you still have a hand. Obviously you still have a hand. I know you're not angling. There's so. people saying that Kuhn could have been it's trying a sick to, raise. You have max to angle shoot with two aces there and try and make it look like he'd made a mistake. Unbelievable. 50 or 14, either one I want to make it, I guess. I mean, there's 16,000. You could use that wrong or not, man. For real, but like, no whatever's frequency. Like, like, if you do it once in yeah. every thousand hands, yeah. it's very short. It should be like 10,000. Like you're not a getting a premium hands to fold somehow by making it that big. You know, do him. The people that he's raising aren't really the people that he's trying to put pressure on anyway. I mean, the people were Do Hummel, Gross, and Mizzy, who all have a lot of points. So, I mean, Do Hummel and Gross and Mizzy are all not folding premium hands. It, it just, the risk to rewards not right. I, I really don't like that play. I, I think it's a big next step. And, I mean, I think the time when you start doing those over raises so is like later when they're down to 30 big blinds. You start pe seeing people like over shove all in, especially in spots where people that have to work their way up the ladder are the people that are left to act. So like they're really going to be calling you with a super tight range. I mean, this isn't really. One of those spots, I don't really know what Jason was thinking. I, I think he, he just got the 10,000s no. and the 1,000s confused. The guy raised over the top, too. <laughs> yeah, with the defense. Yeah, yeah. The like such a Too strong a hand not to see a flop. Like for sure. never, yeah. Like if you say raise when somebody um, raised. And this hand probably won't get interesting until the turn. The I'm, I'm, yeah. check call is fairly standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to do that the same thing. Yeah, I mean, the way Kuhn's been playing, I would. 20,000. He's leading. So Shaq leads, which yeah. was an interesting I mean, decision. I guess he just wants to kind of find yeah. out where he's at in the pot. In fact, I feel like Shaq makes a lot of plays like that. 20,000 call. Don't really like Coon's call. This is the best part of the game. Yeah. Would say it's what? I think he should yeah. just give this up. I, I think the problem is, is that if your twos are good, you know, your opponent's going to have a lot of different straight draws. I mean, there's a ton of straight draws on this flop. Queen, Jack, 9-7, 6-5, all, all these different I mean, hands. Like You're not going to ever know which of those cards are going to hit your opponent. 
you know, you're going to get barreled off your hand a lot of time. Like, let's say your opponent has 9-7 and a queen hits the turn. Like, he's going to bet that again, right? And you're going to fold twos when it was actually the best hand, and now there's only one card to come. So the truth is that, like, even when your hand's good, you don't get to show down and win often enough. I, I think Kuhn's hand's a fold in position. I mean, Kuhn's, uh, I realize he's, you know, we've been trying to instill fear, I mean, essentially. Call 30,000. And obviously the the sort of kicker to how he should play this is there's going to be an overbet at some point. Yeah. Now it's probably gonna go check check. Like don't thirty five thousand. Wow, interesting. Good good value bet by Dan. I actually kinda like it, but I, I thought he would check. And I mean this value bet I, is is he trying to to say you know I can have ace 10 king 10 here? I mean what is he No, what he's saying is he he feels like the king and the ace didn't fill in any of the straight cards on the board for the same reason why Kuhn huh. called the turn is the same reason why Shaq thinks that his 10's probably still good. And the ace on the river if Kuhn floated with ace high on the flop, there's almost no ace high hand he's going to float again with on the turn really. So it's very unlikely he has an ace. And now so he's thinking that the king and the ace probably didn't hit Kuhn's hand, and that my 10 with a decent kicker is very likely to still be good. So I actually, I mean, Shaq's played this hand pretty well. It's a strange hand. Shaq's got some game. He's got results. That is absolutely for sure. And uh, he's got results in the kind so of tournaments where though. it is very hard to win without having game. So hard to have value too. I mean, you could have king ten or ace ten. Wow! And the way he's talking this out, he's obviously three, the raise is out of the question. Is he actually? He, he was considering just calling here? With queen jack. Yeah. Honestly, I think he's. I think he's going to talk himself into a call. He didn't call all the way, hoping that Shaq has a, a straight draw to fold this. I think he's going to pay <sighs> off. What good news for Dan Shaq? Ooh! Oh. Wow! Check. Jack nice hand, buddy. <laughs> and Dan had to have that odd thing of, of getting called and not actually even being sure if his hand was good. Big, big pot for Dan Shaq. Good sizing there, Danny. I put you on like nines or... I have so much <laughs> ace high, though. But the I, bet's I, good. The bet's good. On because the flop, you don't lose I a lot. put you on like a pair of nines, so... It, I, if I thought that then, I gotta go with it. <laughs> well, I mean, even if I have ace high, you're getting a, like they're giving I yourself a really cheap price. For the yeah, that's, so that's, that's a good bet. That's yeah. It's sort of a protection blocker, yeah, yeah. thinking you got nines already anyway. Kind of. Dan Shack's tight approach working well so far, as he looks to get his first points on the board for this campaign. And for Coon, it's a couple of hands to forget as he slips down the leaderboard. Selps needs points and desperately needs chips if she's to avoid more Premier League disappointment. Join us next time as Heat 3 draws to a close as we reach the halfway point of the Heat stages here at the Playground Poker Club in Montreal. You brought the monkey out in me because you're such a monkey. You gotta monkey around a little every once in a while. Just trying to make me sweat or what? That's so sick. Shack attack. Get you a beer if you call. Ooh, I call. Man.